Hey guys, welcome back to Cyber Platter. This is a video to help you prepare for your CSSP examination. I have the entire playlist. I will link it in the description box. Today we'll discuss the topic understand and apply security concepts. That is 1.2 in the CISSP syllabus from domain one. We will talk about the five pillars of information security here. Confidentiality, integrity, availability, authenticity and non repudiation. First concept is confidentiality. It is one of the fundamental principles in information security. It ensures the protection and restricted access of sensitive or private information. It prevents unauthorized disclosure or access of information. This unauthorized disclosure or access can be because of intentional attacks or human error or oversight. The primary goal of confidentiality is to preserve the privacy and security of sensitive information. So confidentiality is making sure that the information is accessed only by individuals with proper authorization. Data must be protected at rest, in use and in transit. Data at rest refers to information that is stored or saved in a non-volatile location such as databases, hard drives or archives. This data is not actively being processed or transmitted. For example, encrypted files stored on a server or data stored in a database. Next is data in use. Data Data and use pertains to information that is actively being processed, accessed or utilized by a system or application. This occurs when data is being read, modified or operated on. Example includes information being processed in the memory of a computer during real time operations. Next is data in transit. This refers to the information that is actively moving from one location to another over a network. During this phase, data is in motion and susceptible to interception or tampering. Example includes information transmitted between devices through the internet such as sending an encrypted email. So that's about different states of data. Previously, I mentioned confidentiality prevents unauthorized disclosure or access of information that is sensitive. This sensitive data can be PII that is personally identifiable information. It can include include social uh, security numbers, driver's license numbers, passport information, birth dates and addresses. And then we have healthcare information that is called PHI. This includes patient medical records, treatment plans, health insurance details, uh, prescription information and more. Sensitive information can also be financial data like credit card information, bank account information, financial transactions. It can be intellectual property like trade secrets, research and development data, source code for proprietary software. It can be employee records like personal files, salary and compensation details, performance reviews. It can be uh, national security information like classified government documents, military intelligence, strategic plans and operations. It can be customer data like customer profiles, purchase history, uh, communication records. So these are some of the uh, examples of sensitive data or confidential data. Now let's see some of the threats to confidentiality. It can be social engineering, shoulder surfing, that is observing sensitive information such as passwords or pins by looking over someone's shoulder without their knowledge. It can be impersonation, that is pretending to be someone else with the intent of gaining unauthorized access to confidential information or systems. And a threat example can be man in the middle attack, that is interception of messages, meaning intercepting and eavesdropping on communication between two parties to gain access to sensitive information. Then there is network scanning, that is conducting scans of a network to discover vulnerabilities and potential points of unauthorized access. There, it can include port scanning as well. And then there is escalation of privileges, then sniffing and eavesdropping, 
capturing network traffic, brute force attacks, insufficient access controls, uh, physically tampering hardware or storage devices to gain confidential information, data interception via unsecured Wi-Fi, USB dropping, spyware and key loggers, DNS spoofing. All these are threats to confidentiality. These are only some of the examples actually. There are many more. Now let's look at the countermeasures that address potential threats. So the countermeasures to safeguard confidentiality include access controls, that is strong access controls, uh, including user authentication and authorization mechanisms. You can also implement multi-factor authentication. Then there is encryption, employee training and awareness, network segmentation. Network segmentation is to isolate and restrict access to sensitive data, limiting the potential impact of a security breach. Then you can apply principle of least privilege, granting in individuals the minimum level of access necessary to perform their job functions. Then you can deploy DLP that is data loss prevention solutions to monitor, detect and prevent unauthorized transmission of sensitive data both within the organization and externally. Next you can conduct regular security audits and assessments to identify vulnerabilities and ensure compliance with security policies. You can implement uh, physical security controls such as access badges, surveillance, uh, restricted access areas. This is to prevent unauthorized physical physical access to sensitive information. Then you can implement a data classification and labeling system to categorize information based on sensitivity levels, allowing for targeted security measures for different data types. You can use network uh, traffic padding as a countermeasure and also you can keep software and systems up to date with the latest security patches to address known vulnerabilities and reduce the risk of exploitation. Use secure communication protocols like uh, TLS, SSL to encrypt data in transit and protect against man-in-the-middle attacks. You can employ endpoint protection solutions including antivirus software, uh, EDR solutions, device encryption to uh, secure endpoints against threats. So these are some of the countermeasures to safeguard confidentiality. The next concept that we will discuss is integrity. Integrity refers to the assurance that data remains accurate, consistent, and unaltered during its entire life cycle. Accuracy is ensuring that the data is correct, reliable, and free from errors. Consistency refers to ensuring that data remains logically and structurally consistent and also internal and external consistency of objects should also be considered. Unaltered state refers to data has not been changed or tampered with by any unauthorized subjects. The goal is to prevent accidental or in intentional alterations that could compromise the reliability and trustworthiness of the data. So integrity and confidentiality are dependent on each other. Without maintaining the integrity of data, it becomes challenging to uphold confidentiality. That is because as unauthorized alterations could compromise the secrecy of sensitive information. Now let's discuss some of the threats to integrity. Examples include viruses, logic bombs, code in, uh, injection, data corruption. Data corruption, corruption can be unintentional changes or errors that alter the accuracy and reliability of stored data. Then there is unauthorized access and modification. Threats can be insider threats, that is employees or individuals with internal access intentionally or unintentionally modify data in a way that undermines its integrity. Threat can also be mid a man in the middle attack that is intercepting and altering communication between two parties allowing an attacker to modify data in uh, transit. Then phishing attacks, SQL injection attacks, file system manipulation, Trojan horses, environmental threats like physical threat events such as fires, floods or earthquakes can damage hardware and storage devices leading to data corruption or loss. Then hardware failures, interference from electromagnetic fields, system backdoors, human errors for like example modifying or deleting files. All these are examples of threats to integrity. Now let's look at the countermeasures to safeguard integrity. It includes checksum, 
and hash functions. Also message digest, message authentication code that is MAC, cyclic redundancy check, CRC. This is to generate unique values for data and verifying these values to detect any changes. Then we have digital signatures. This is a separate video on digital signatures. I will link it in the description box if you want to know more. Version control systems. This is to track changes to files or documents, allowing for easy identification of modifications. And countermeasure includes uh, strict access controls. It can be both logical and physical. And then you can implement uh, data validation checks to ensure that data conforms to predefined rules and standards. Backup and recovery is also a countermeasure. Regularly backing up data and establishing recovery mechanisms to restore the original unaltered state in the event of data corruption or loss. Awareness trainings, uh, encryption, having MFA input or uh, function checks, input validation, all these are examples of integrity countermeasures. Next concept is availability. Availability refers to consistent, timely, and uninterrupted access to data, systems, and resources by authorized users whenever needed. The goal is to prevent disruptions, downtime, or unavailability of assets. Some of the metrics utilized uh, to describe availability include MD MTD, that is mean time to detect, RTO, recovery time objective, RPO, recovery point objective, SLA, service level agreement, MTBR, mean time between repairs. You might have seen in SLAs or uh, contracts that sometimes they say the software should support access to say 1000 users simultaneously. Those are availability terms or it can say that the application should be available 99.99% as specified in the SLA or uh, critical application should be restored to normal operations within an hour. All these are availability terms. Now let's look at the threats to availability. First is DOS or DDoS attacks, denial of service or distributed denial of service attacks. That is overwhelming a system, network or service with a flood of traffic, rendering it inaccessible to legitimate users. Then network failures, that is disruptions or outages in network infrastructure that can interrupt communication and access to services. Then the threat can also be hardware failures, that is malfunctions or breakdowns in hardware components such as servers, routers or storage devices leading to service unavailability. Then there can be software errors or software bugs and glitches, uh, power outage, data corruption, that is unintentional changes or errors that compromise the integrity of data leading to disruptions in services. Uh, it can be insider threats, that is malicious actions or negligence by employees or authorized individuals that result in intentional or unintentional disruptions to systems. Then malware infections, uh, configuration errors, natural disasters like earthquakes, floods, fires or hurricanes that can physically damage infrastructure and disrupt uh, services. Then there can be human error, communication interruptions, lack of redundancy, supply chain disruptions. All these are examples of threats to availability. Now let's look at the countermeasures to safeguard availability. Examples include deploying uh, DDoS protection solutions and services, implementing redundant systems and failover mechanisms, employing load balancing techniques to distribute network traffic uh, evenly across multiple servers, regularly backing up data and establishing robust uh, recovery strategies, designing networks with redundancy, multiple paths and resilient configurations, implementing monitoring tools, following robust software development practices, installing UPS that is uninterruptible power supply systems and backup generators to ensure continuous power in the event of electrical outages, providing regular training to employees on security best practices, fault tolerance, 
eliminating uh, single points of failure having a strong business continuity plan getting ransomware protection solutions so all these are examples of availability countermeasures the next topic that we'll discuss is authenticity this refers to the assurance that digital content communications and interactions can be trusted to originate from their claimed sources and not have been tampered with it addresses the challenge of verifying the legitimacy of information and entities in the digital realm that is when you download a software update and you want to confirm it is from the official vendor then the vendor provides a digitally signed update then verifying the digital signature ensures that the update hasn't been tampered or altered and is genuinely from the vendor so if you are accessing online banking uh, website you want to make sure that it is not a phishing site so the website uses tls encryption displaying a padlock icon and a valid digital certificate confirming the authenticity of the banking sites or if you want to verify the authenticity of a digital contract then the document is digitally signed by the parties involved the digital signature ensures the integrity and the origin of the contract so these are some of the examples now let's look at another security concept called non repudiation so we learn that authenticity is about making sure something or someone is genuine and trustworthy for example checking a digital signature on a software update to confirm it really comes from the official provider non repudiation is to ensure that someone can't deny their actions or the authenticity of something they did for example using a digital signature in an email so that the sender can't later deny sending it providing proof of their involvement so in summary authenticity is about verifying if something is real and reliable while non repudiation focuses on preventing someone from denying their actions or the legitimacy of what they did usually non repudiation is provided by the use of digital signatures so a physical signature is handwritten on paper relying on the uniqueness of handwriting while a digital signature is an electronic represent presentation generated using cryptographic methods for securing verification in digital systems another example of how to achieve non repudiation includes transaction logging detailed logs of transactions or communication activities including time stamps and participant identities contribute to non repudiation these logs serve as evidence and records of actions taken pki that is public key infrastructure also plays a role in non repudiation by managing digital certificates and keys there's a separate video on pki i will link it in the description box if you if you want to know more so in pki the private key associated with a digital signature is known only to the signer this reinforces the uh, uniqueness and accountability of the signature and then audit trails capture a chronological record of system activities user interactions and events these audit trails serve as evidence to verify who performed specific actions and when so these are some of the examples of non repudiation so these are the five pillars of information security that is required for your cissp examination to know confidentiality integrity availability authenticity and non repudiation so before ending this uh, chapter i also want you to know what is a cia triad it is a foundational concept of information security representing three key principles that is confidentiality integrity and availability we already discussed this concept so i'm not going to repeat it again so vulnerabilities such as uh, weak access controls and data validation pose risks like unauthorized access and data corruption impacting the confidentiality integrity and availability of information in the context of the cia triad so vulnerabilities and risks are also measured or evaluated based on how much they impact the confidentiality integrity and availability that is the cia triad principles and there is also another concept called dad 
which is the opposite of CIA triad. It stands for disclosure, alteration and destruction. This symbolizes in negative outcomes when the principles of confidentiality, integrity and availability are compromised. That if co uh, confidentiality is compromised, then the negative impact is disclosure. Integrity is compromised, the negative impact is alteration. When availability is compromised, the negative impact is destruction. So that's it for today, guys. I I hope you learned a little bit that can help you with your CISSP examination. I will see you in another video where we discuss more topics related to CISSP. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share our videos. That helps us a lot. See you soon. Bye-bye.